Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. It is August 6, 2024 at 8.27 a.m. And this is vlog number 26. If you're new to the channel, I print out these parts on my tiny print farm of Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers. And I got an AMS light combo right there. And this is a left latch, right latch, left plate, right plate. And I print each one on each printer. So this is how one set looks. And for the AMS light combo, I use all the near empty spools of filament that I can't use to make one full product on these machines here. Now over here, we got another tolerance test, but as you can see, it's upright. Shout out to Jay Houts. He mentioned to do it upright to test the Z-plane tolerance. And so thank you for that suggestion. We have the one from yesterday where I did it flat. So that's X and Y. Same with these here. And I also, I don't know if you noticed, printed out these bits sideways. <laughs> but one thing to note is if I were to print a cylindrical object, I usually wouldn't print it laying down. I'll probably print it upwards because I know that would give me a better print. So there's something to be said of printing a cylindrical object sideways. I just did it to test it. Since I already have another one I can use that I printed in this orientation, I'm going to try both of them out. I'm going to try these out on this and these out on this as well. Guys, so let's get this thing off the build plate and give it a try. Very nice. That came out really nice with these tree supports. So as you can tell, we start out below one millimeter, which is something I love about this thing, as I mentioned yesterday. It's looking a little bit more rough around the edges when printed vertically, but let's see how it holds up in the test. Likewise, let's take these guys off. Okay, that's the hexagonal one. That's the uh, square one. And finally, the cylindrical one. Came off with its little paper thin raft. Yeah, definitely that's gonna be tough to work with. Let me see if I can just take off that raft completely. Typically, I would stand up a cylindrical model just to get the best possible result. So I don't get any like drooping like you see here. But I just wanted to do it for fun just to see what the results are and see if uh, see the capabilities of this. But definitely it's looking to be a little bit oval. And same with these actually. They look a little bit oval. But let's give it a try. So we got a 0 0.3 here. That went in perfectly. How about 0 0.25? Perfectly. 0 0.2? went in with a little bit of friction 0 0.15 that went in definitely with friction and 0 0.1 going in wow and lastly 0 0.05 i am super impressed i thought it was going to stop somewhere over here oh man that is great yeah it has friction like this one did but it's still going in great at 0.05. That is great. Even warped and all. Wow. Okay, now let's give the square a try. At 0.3. At 0 0.25. 0 0.2. What? What? Okay, 0.2. 0.15. Point one, almost, almost, come on. Point one is stuck. Oh, I just rotated it and it went in. It's real tight though, like a 0 0.05 would be. But let's see if it could handle 0 0.05. Yeah, it's in there. It's tight, and I'm not, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get that out. But that is super tight, but it fits still boy oh boy I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get that one out just bare hands let me see if I could pull it out with these here yep there you go it was able to come out with a little bit of help of the tool so it fit as well wow this machine is super impressive this bamboo lab a1 man that is awesome okay so hexagonal shape 
at 0 0.3 went in just fine 0 0.25 went in just fine 0 0.2 beautifully 0 0.15 beautifully again and 0 0.1 are we going in should I try rotating it 0 0.1 come on you can do it you've been doing great there you go that's in at 0 0.1 let me pull this out and final test here 0 0.05 It's it's real tight. Let me see if I could rotate it to get it in a good good position. Yeah, there you have it, folks. That is in. All right, now to pull this out. Super impressed, by the way. There you go. The Z-plane tolerance test. I was gonna try this out. I brought this along because uh, I thought it might not work. So I figured. By the way, look at the difference between the oval shape of the Z plane test and uh, this one this one's nice and circular uh, so I was gonna use these um, pieces here but it worked so I don't need to use those now let's try these latches here okay this is a 0 0.2 test that went in nice and tight unlike the ones from yesterday they had a lot of tolerance. This doesn't. This feels somewhat tight. It could be the irregularity over here, the way it printed. But nonetheless, they go through, which is awesome. Okay, now let's check the 0.15 tolerance on these. Ooh, it looks like there's a little bit of a layer shift, or did it break? Looks like a layer shift. How interesting. Let's give it a try. With a, <laughs> with a layer shift, it went in a little tight. However, that's all right. There's a little bit of a peel away here. got stuck on the print bed. But that is looking good. Even with that little bit of a layer shift there. How interesting that that happened. Or did it break? I'm curious now. No, it looks like a layer shift because it's fused. Okay. Anyhow it worked and as you know from yesterday's video the set both of these had a pretty big tolerance gap so let's see about the last one the tightest one which is a 0 0.1 okay by the way the print quality is looking amazing other than that layer shift oh this one didn't work out this one actually broke it might be also because of my tree support settings they're not standard generic settings they're my own personal settings so that's unfortunate that one didn't work out but it looked like it would have been tight but perhaps fit no way to know nonetheless usually with these I did want to mention usually with these sort of latches I don't I wouldn't print them up vertically I was I was intending on perhaps not doing these anyway because anytime I do do these sorts of latches they are printed in this orientation so there you have it folks, that's the that's the Z-plane tolerance test. Super cool. Worked out really well. Nothing like a good cup of coffee. And so we're talking about how to keep track of prototypes. Now, I used to do it like this pretty often and every time I come up with a new idea that I think uh, is worth noting, a completely new idea, I put it in the inventor's notebook here um, and I'm not going to show you some of the stuff I have, but I'll show you the pages, how it works. You got your signature, your date, your pages you started on and continued on. And um, maybe you want to show it to somebody else that you trust that can they, they can also sign it as kind of proof that you came up with it on that date. Or I'll put the start date here. And then um, let's say I, I continued it from 22. I'll put 22 there. And then if I end it here, I can put just end. And so this is how I used to do it using the inventor's notebook. However, now I'm using things like Excel sheets. We can jump into Google Sheets and I'll show you an example, not, not a real world example, but uh, mimicking one of my real world projects. And I'll show you my process in there and also how you can differentiate uh, the physical products 
from each other and uh, assign them to the ones you have recorded in your in your Google Sheets. All right, guys, so we're here in Google Sheets and why I've chosen to use Google Sheets is because it's free with your Gmail account. So you get this tool for free, which is awesome. And so what we want to do when keeping track of our prototyping is we want to first name the Google Sheet. So this is right plate prototyping and I'm just calling it R underscore P for short. And so when making all those changes, we want to make sure we have the version, the date, your, your 3D software. In my case, I use Maya and then your slicer file name. In my case, I use uh, Bamboo Studio now, but before I used uh, Cura or Creality's version of Cura. And then all the major changes, the slicer settings, your print results and some notes. And so I'm gonna go over some of these examples that I have over here. And these are not real world examples. This is just for demonstration purposes. And so along with writing the version numbers here, I write these version numbers on the physical product using a permanent marker. And here is the physical product. All right guys, my apologies for the super clean workspace. <laughs> But this is what I'm referring to uh, when I say I mark it on the physical product itself. We got right underscore plate one, right underscore plate two, right underscore plate three, right underscore plate four. And this helps me keep track of the physical product or the physical 3D print with the digital notes and documentation. All right, now that you've seen the physical product, what you're seeing there was RP1, which is right plate one, right plate two, and the number is indicative of the version. And then I also want to write down when I made those changes. And then the 3D file name, which I usually have a naming convention that looks like this, right plate dot version 0001. Likewise, for the slicer for Bamboo Studio, it's right plate underscore version one. And then you wanna just write down the major changes here uh, that you made in the 3D file. So I changed the tolerance of uh, right plate one to 0.15 millimeter tolerance. So for version two, I did 0.12 millimeter tolerance. And for version three, I did 0.85 millimeter tolerance and removed two screw holes. So just you know, writing down all the major changes you made in the model file. And then uh, for this one, after having removed the two screws, I decided to go back to 0.15 millimeter tolerance and just noted that there. So for the slicer settings, we use generic, oops, I meant to write PLA. So for this one, I wrote generic PLA settings and I wrote what sort of material I used here in parentheses, so it's PLA. And so I'm gonna click on this because it kind of goes behind the next column. Uh, number of walls, I did three using adaptive cubic infill and I did PETG for version number two. Version number three, I did a number of walls of four with adaptive cubic infill again with 60% infill using PETG. And then for version number four, I did number of walls four with a gyroid infill this time, 45% infill using PETG. And so what were the print results? For version one, part was too weak, let me delete that, and flimsy. And then for version two, part was stronger, but the print time significantly increased. And then for version three, part was much stronger, but print time and material use significantly increased. So for these, you can actually write also the print time. Let's say it increased uh, to three hours and 45 minutes. So we can you know, keep track of all that information as well. And material used, you can write down however much it started to use. So it went to, let's say 105 grams. And if you wrote down what it was here as well, you'll see how much it increased. Uh, for version four, part was just as strong as version three, but print time decreased. And then we can write the time notably and material used also notably decreased. And we can write how much that was as well in grams. And then if you have any extra notes, so PLA was not good for this use case need something more heat resistant and strong. So we switched over to PETG, overall better but needs more strength. So version three here says, this increased the weight of the overall product too much. So we didn't want that because we want to keep that balanced out as well. And version four, this was perfect for its intended use. So this is a technique I use when going in and prototyping. It keeps things organized. And like I said, I used to use the inventor's notebook, but nowadays I just use this. This is much better for me and my personal use cases. So hopefully this answers your question about how to keep track of prototyping with your 3D models and then your slicer files and so on and so forth. There is one other thing I wanted to show you here. This is the stealth table. 
So I have a folder called Stealth Side Table, and I always create a series of folders in them. One for Maya, one for OBJ, one for G code, and one for the slicer software I'm using. So I had this around when I was using Creality, but now I'm using Bamboo Studio. And so you'd keep those Maya files in here, your OBJ files, so everything is really organized, anything related to it, such as even the photos that I used for Maker World. So I'm gonna click G code here, and for my naming conventions for my G code, I always end it with the time it's gonna print because I want to know that so I can come back right away and continue working. So for this one, stealth side table bottom, it's going to take three hours and 27 minutes. So that's something I like to add as well. And that's pretty much it. This keeps my workflow organized and keeping the naming conventions of your files as organized as possible and in specific folders designated for the projects would help you with keeping track of all the changes in your project. All right, guys, so I got to run physical tests on these parts here because they're new measurements. And uh, I'm going to take those off and get those tested. I'm not going to start a new round of prints yet because I'm in a testing phase now. And so when we get that done, I'll get the I'll get the parts starting to print out again. But that about wraps it up for today's vlog. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, peace, love and joy.